The Office celebrated Christmas seven times over the nine seasons. Christmas Party is the tenth episode of the second season. The episode opens with Pam stuffing envelopes with the Dunder Mifflin Christmas cards to send to the clients. And it's the day of the office Christmas party, and everyone is preparing for the afternoon festivities. Michael and Dwight struggle to fit the Christmas tree into the office, getting splinters and avoiding breaking any branches. The tree is taller than the drop-down ceiling, knocking the ceiling tiles down. Michael wishes everybody a Merry Christmas, and we get to the opening credits. To make the tree fit, Kevin uses a paper cutter to chop off the top of the tree. If you haven't noticed, Kevin, along with the rest of the male cast members, are all wearing cheesy Christmas dyes. Kevin asks Michael, why did you get a tree this big? Michael replies with, Hey, that's what she said. Before telling us why he wanted it to be impressive. The biggest day of the year deserves the biggest tree of the year. Kevin successfully cuts off the top of the tree and asks Michael what they should do with the hacked off part. Michael says that it's a perfect mini tree and we should sell that to charity. That is what Christmas is all about. Throughout the episode, we're going to learn office facts about Christmas. We will keep a running log of all the things mentioned. We then cut to Dwight using a dustbuster to suck up all the tree needles. Everybody in the office will be participating in the annual Secret Santa gift exchange. Jim discusses his Secret Santa gift for Pam. It's a teapot so she can make tea at her desk. He places a number of inside jokes, a cassette tape that is not discussed, Jim's high school photo, a pack of hot sauce that she mistakenly thought was ketchup to put on her hot dog, a pencil that he claims would take too long to explain, and a card addressed to Pam. Jim mentions that Christmas is the time to tell people how you feel. The party planning committee are meeting in the conference room. Michael barges into the meeting wearing a Santa beard and a hat and hands them a stack of money and wants double of everything, plates, ice cream, and napkins. He wants his party to really rock. Because remember, it's not a party without double the amount of napkins. Michael wants people to cut loose, make out, hang from the ceiling, and wear lampshades on their head, just like the Playboy Mansion party. Michael will have his digital camera, and the best crazy things that will happen will be on the cover of the newsletter. Pam reminds Michael that they can't serve liquor at the party, and Michael knows and blames stupid corporate wet blankets like booze ever killed anybody. Secret Santa is about to start, and Dwight announces that everybody should get their presents, wrap them, and place them under the tree in the next five minutes. Failure to do that and you will be disqualified from the Secret Santa with no exceptions except for Michael. The office employees discuss presents they got each other. Toby got Angela a poster of kids dressed as adults playing toy instruments. Oscar got Creed. He doesn't know anything about him and he might be the Irish so he got him a four leaf clover keychain. Kevin got himself for Secret Santa but didn't tell anybody. Michael asks Jim if he got something good this year for his Secret Santa recipient. Jim reminds him that he can't discuss that since it is a secret. Michael hints that he spent a lot of money on his present and ignored the $20 limit because he wanted to have this party be really special. The party begins with the lighting of the tree. Michael asks everybody to have a countdown just like the Rockefeller Christmas Center. The tree really doesn't light up. The lights that fill his bot are too small and not enough to cover the entire tree. Secret Santa begins and Michael has a talking head where he proclaims presents are the best way to show someone how much you care. It's a tangible thing to say, I love you this many dollars worth. Oscar is first and opens up a shower radio from Kelly. Jim's gift is a plaid shirt from Creed, and Jim believes Creed forgot and grabbed the shirt out of his closet that doesn't fit Jim. Creed's hawking head confirms the story. Yep, that's exactly what happened. Pam opens up Jim's teapot and pretends she doesn't know who's it from. Keeping it moving, Dwight throws Ryan his gift. It's a video iPod. Michael proclaims that somebody has the spirit of Christmas and admits it was him and went over the $20 limit. He also proclaims that it doesn't matter what he spent, it matters that Christmas is fun. Michael, thinking his gift would be just as good, opens up his gift from Phyllis. It's a homemade knitted oven mitt, and he's angry about the gift and walks away. He admits that Phyllis only cares about him a homemade oven mitt worth. After all, he gave Ryan an iPod. Upset with his gift, Michael returns and says that they are going to turn Secret Santa into Yankee Swap. What is Yankee Swap? The rules for the game begin with one person opening a gift. The next person can either open a new present or steal that person's gift. 
If that gift is stolen, then that person can steal someone else's gift, or choose a new gift. This process repeats until all the gifts have been opened. Jim says that sounds like Nasty Christmas, and Pam says they call it White Elephant. Michael just calls it fun. Meredith is up and she can take a new gift or steal someone else's. Michael tries to entice her with the oven mitt, but she takes the teapot. Jim is concerned because he bought that specifically for Pam, and then Pam steals the iPod. It's Ryan's turn and he has a choice to steal the oven mitt, the old shirt, or the shower radio, or he could pick a new gift. He chooses a new gift of a nameplate meant for Kelly from Stanley. Michael thinks this is going great. Kelly opens up the creepy poster that Toby got Angela. And when it's Angela's turn, she takes the poster and Kelly steals the iPod. Michael proclaims that everybody loves the iPod. It's a huge hit. It is almost a Christmas miracle. It's Meredith's turn again and she tries to take the iPod. Christmas miracle. But it was already stolen that round. Michael uses reverse psychology to get her to take the oven mitt. She takes it and Michael calls her a sucker. He explains that reverse psychology is basically you make someone think the opposite of what you believe and that tricks them into doing something stupid. On Michael's turn, he opens up a big bag of paintballs from Dwight. The gift also includes a paintball lessons. Annoyed, Michael asks him how that is better than an iPod. It's the last round and Pam steals the iPod. Jim asks her if she's sure she doesn't want the teapot. She does, but she can't turn down an iPod. Come on, Jim. Kelly steals a book of short stories and Dwight takes the teapot and proclaims Yankee Swap is like Machiavelli meets Christmas. Michael thinks Yankee Swap was a huge hit even though he ended up with Dwight's paintball pellets. Nobody else agrees with him. Annoyed with their reaction to the game, Michael foolishly admits that he got a big bonus because he fired Devin and he used the money to buy something awesome. The office is shocked to hear that he got a bonus and everybody is upset. Michael reacts, Unbelievable. I do the nicest thing that everyone's ever done for these people and they freak out. Happy birthday, Jesus. Sorry your party's so lame. Honestly, the party was lame, so Michael goes to the liquor store and buys 15 bottles of vodka to get 20 people plastered, spending $166.41. That means that each bottle only costs about $11 each. Now that is some bottom shelf liquor. Jim tries to convince Dwight to sell or trade him the teapot because it was meant for Pam. He offers the keychain and Dwight tells him no and quotes Billy Zane from Titanic. A real man makes his own luck. He's going to use a teapot to cure his sinus infections by pouring green tea into his nostrils and Jim is disgusted and upset. The party livens up when Michael shows up with the vodka. He proclaims that Santa has been a little bit naughty. It's the Christmas spirit as in spirits. Meredith, excited they can drink, is told by Toby that the company is not allowed to serve alcohol. Michael proclaims it's a party. If he can't throw a good party for his employees, then he's a terrible boss. The party comes alive. It's amazing what cheap booze will do for a party. They do shots of vodka and take photos. Michael calls out Ryan as the king of the party planning committee and this upsets Angela. Roy and Daryl are talking sports and Pam feels guilty about taking the iPod instead of the teapot. She trades with Dwight since Jim went to a lot of trouble. I mean, after all, Roy may or will get her an iPod, she's not sure. Jim tells her to look inside at the bonus gifts as he quickly pockets the card he got Pam admitting how he feels about her. Dwight has the iPod, and Michael says Dwight deserves it. The party is happening. Todd Packer shows up, calling everybody nerds with mistletoe hanging over his crotch. Michael lets Daryl play Santa. Kevin makes a photocopy of his butt, and then Michael puts a lampshade over his head, and Packer passes out when Jim covers him with silly string. In the kitchen, Kelly kisses Dwight. He looks uncomfortable, looking for Angela, and tells Kelly not to do that again. Angela witnesses the kiss and smashes glass ornaments by the dumpster. Everybody heads to Poor Richard's where we get the final thoughts on Christmas from Michael. Christmas is awesome. You get to spend time with people you love, get drunk, and nobody can say anything. You give presents, you get presents. Greatest day of all time. The episode wraps with Meredith taking off her shirt in Michael's office and he takes a picture. That's everything Christmas in the episode of The Office Christmas Party. Have a suggestion for the future episode? Leave a comment below. We will see everything Christmas in the next episode featuring Home Improvement's episode You'll Better Watch Out. 
How Much Christmas is in that episode? Click on the subscribe button to be alerted to when that episode is released if you want to find out. I'm the Christmas aficionado, and remember, stay off the naughty list. Well, happy birthday, Jesus. Sorry your party's so lame. Thank <laughs> you.